Um, I'm from MPI. We are a government organization. Um, we help to promote Malaysian real estate uh, overseas and we bring in foreign investment into the country, into uh, the country's real estate. Uh, we also match foreign investors with the owners and developers of real estate in Malaysia. We assist foreign investi uh, investors navigate their way by providing information. If you give me your name card or if you've no time, you go back and Google Malaysian Property Inc. Write to us. We give free publications every month that updates you about Malaysian property. Okay? Uh, we are also holding an event on uh, Greater KL Office Space uh, the, the coming month. So these are some of the things that we do. Uh, we also have uh, this exhibition on the smartphone where you can download the app. Um, it's under this icon called Malaysian Property Showcase. Uh, you can go to Google Play, download, and view the latest projects launch. We only do uh, developers that are reputable. And as the previous speaker has mentioned, it's very important when you're investing overseas, uh, make sure that you invest in reputable uh, developers' projects. The idea of creating MPI is to provide a stress-free environment for those foreigners who want to invest in Malaysian real estate. So you have queries, you can also uh, write in to ask us. Uh, at the same time, for companies, uh, you may want to reach out to certain developers. You can also seek our help. We will help to facilitate this and we connect you to the developers in Malaysia. Now, the content of uh, my me message today would be divided into five sections. Um, I would explain Malaysia as a business destination, the government's vision in Malaysia, how the nation has fared so far and whether this is the right time to invest, and Malaysia as a second home to Singaporeans. Now, when you invest in a property in Malaysia, you, are, you have to think very much long term, not just a one-year horizon, but a five-year horizon. So, it's very important to understand Malaysia as a business destination. Now, Malaysia is very strategic uh, in its location, not unlike Singapore. Within a two-hour radius, we can reach countries in ASEAN. Within four hours radius, we reach countries uh, with one of the largest populations in the world, in India and China. Um, the difference with Singapore is that we are multicultural. We have Indians who can speak the language of India. Uh, we have Chinese who speak language of, of uh, China. And we have Mal uh, Bahasa Malaysia, and we can connect with people in Indonesia. So that makes uh, business language very easy for us, and we can understand, and uh, it's easy for us to do business there. The difference, again, between Singapore and Malaysia is that Malaysia is um, rich in resources. We are self-sufficient in energy, and we are nuclear-free. Our oil reserves can last 20 years. We also have clean energy, particularly in the state of Sarawak. Um, there'll be a lot of new uh, dams coming up. And uh, also, we are the second largest, going to be the second largest source of replenishable biodiesel. Um, this is because we are one of the second largest producers of uh, palm oil in the world. And we have uh, been innovating and getting that to be used as energy. We also have more land than people. Uh, Malaysia covers a very large area, as the previous one of the previous speakers had mentioned. Iskandar is three times the size of Singapore, so you can't imagine Malaysia is really big. In fact, if you um, look at Sarawak, Sarawak alone is actually the same size as the whole of Peninsular Malaysia. So you can imagine, we really have more land than people. We also have uh, green lung. We are the green lung in Asia. Our forests cover 60% of total land area. Um, and 15% is plantation land. Uh, a substantial 15% is protected. 
We are also one of the world's most mega diverse countries with rich flora and fauna. On real estate, we have one of the longest coastlines uh, in Asia and one of the highest peaks in Southeast Asia. We possess both deep sea ports as well as shallow ones for recreational activities like marina and resorts. Now, many opportunities uh, and greenfield developments in Malaysia. We've only heard about Iskandar, but there's uh, other regions like the East Coast, the Northern Corridor, Sabah and Sarawak. A lot of people don't know that, um, for example, uh, in the Northern Corridor, on the border of Thailand, uh, there's one of the oldest rainforests in the world that's situated, situated there. In uh, Sabah, some of these land areas, you can actually stay there, have a property there, where you can actually view both the sunrise and the sunset. Now, Kuala Lumpur may not be as competitive as Singapore. We are second, but nevertheless, uh, we are the second most livable city in Southeast Asia. And like Singapore, we are transitioning from uh, previously, Singapore was efficiency-driven to more of an innovation-driven economy. This means that we are bringing in a lot of foreign talent into the country, just like Singapore is doing. So we are at that stage where we want to move up. And this would mean, would give a very positive uh, impact on the real estate, because you're getting people who can come and buy up the real estate. In terms of investor protection, we are ranked fourth globally, and we've also scored well in terms of ease of doing business, now 12th in the world. Government's vision. Now, Malaysia is on the cusp of change. The government wants to see a transformation. They, want, they hope to see Malaysia become a high-income nation by 2020. To do that, they have set up a task force called Permandu. They meet with the Prime Minister every week and they are being, being uh, they crack the whip and uh, the task force gets the uh, domestic investments going. They hold a lot of uh, what they call labs where a lot of private sector comes to meet and the government removes all the bottlenecks and accelerates the investments in this uh, 12 key economic areas. Now, um, those, these, the, the identified areas are oil and gas, palm oil, financial services, wholesale and retail, tourism, information, ICT, education, electrical and electronics, business services, private healthcare, agriculture, and greater Kuala Lumpur. Now, all these sectors will require real estate. It would require land to build, for example, if you, if you want to do, uh, do retail, you do need land. But the important component here is the Greater KL, which is truly a real estate focus. Now, Greater Kuala Lumpur aims to target multinationals. They want to get 100 multinationals into Kuala Lumpur by 2020. And in the process, they are also uh, trying to make Kuala Lumpur greener. They're going to rejuvenate the river. Um, and establish iconic places. There'll be pedestrian walks. Um, so they want to make KL the top 20 most livable cities in the world by then. Uh, employment would increase from 2.5 million to 4 million by 2020. And in total, population will increase from 6 million to 10 million. Per capita income in KL will be the highest compared to the other states. And foreign talent will grow from 9% to 20% of population. Now, within Greater KL, they hope to establish uh, the Tun Raza Exchange. This is supposed to be the Islamic financial hub for the country uh, and the world. Uh, Malaysia is already the largest issuer of uh, Sukuk bonds in the world. Now, our Sukuk bonds, which are Islamic bonds, are accepted by 
the rich Middle Eastern countries. As I can see from the chart, uh, we are the biggest issue of Sukuk bonds, even compared to the other countries in the Middle East. And there are, sorry, there are already 17 Islamic banks currently operating in Malaysia, six of which are foreign controlled. We actually issued 26 billion Sukuk bonds in 2012. Another major draw of, of uh, foreign receipts are tourist, uh, tourist receipts. Based on Tourism Malaysia, we received almost uh, 61 billion in tourist receipt in 2012. The biggest beneficiary of these receipts have been hotels, of course, um, almost 26.2 million foreign, and foreign guests come to Malaysia uh, last year. And that's true almost every other year. Um, because of that, you see a lot of new hotels coming in. Um, St. Regis will be opened in 2014. Four Seasons will be opened by 2017. Uh, Harrods, which will build their first hotel, will actually build it in Kuala Lumpur. Of course, the entertainment uh, centers are also benefiting from this tourist, uh, tourism arrivals. CNN voted Malaysia the fourth best shopping city behind New York, Tokyo and London, ahead of cities like Paris and even Hong Kong. Kuala Lumpur was crowned the second best shopping destination in Asia Pacific by Globe Shopper Index. Now with this, there was a rise of medium and high-end shopping malls. Now, foreign operators now set up regional shopping malls targeted at the tourist dollar. You have Simon Property, uh, one of the top retail properties in the world, opening the Johor Premium Outlet in Johor. Um, Mitsui is now going to open Mitsui Premium Outlet Mall, which is the first outside Japan uh, in KL airports. How has the nation fared so far? Economic growth last year was 5.6%. Um, interest rates at 3%. Inflation is below 2% and pretty stable. Uh, FDI bounced back sharply after the global crisis. Yeah. Now, the gross national income has grown by 49% in the past three years. This means that we are actually ahead of our target. The target was originally to achieve this amount, US 15,000 GNI per capita by 2020, but we are ahead. We should be able to achieve it by 2018. Our realized investments uh, have been pretty healthy. We did 62. 0.4 billion last year, which is again higher than the previous year of 54.6 billion. Now, half of it was from domestic investments and half of it from foreign direct investments. On top of that, the investment growth has tripled since the start of the economic transformation program. It tripled from 6 to 7 percent to 22 percent in 2012. There has been some evidence of success so far since the economic transformation program. Firstly, the 49% increase in GNI per capita in the past three years. 5.6% growth when most countries were slowing down. It's record government revenue, 207 billion. Tripling in private investment growth since the start of the economic transformation program. Record private investment at 10 year high. Record stock market performance. We were quite surprised, even after the elections, the market kept on going up. Uh, and it still has quite sustained at, at that level, still at 1,007. Uh, top three years in total trade, record private consumption, and there's been a rise in ranking for our confidence, FDI confidence, from 21 ranking to 10th ranking now. In terms of ease of doing business, we've been ranked uh, 12th position a rise from the 18 positions by the World Bank. 
Now, there are some other facts, factors that are helping push uh, Malaysia into the limelight. Um, there's been a lot of work done in the ASEAN economic community, and that's gaining traction. Uh, you may have heard that the stock markets will be linked amongst a uh, few countries in the ASEAN 6. Um, bilateral relations between Malaysia and Singapore has also improved uh, dramatically. Um, and this would give rise to more trade and investments between the two countries. Tamase's joint venture with Kazana marks the beginning of more of such joint ventures to come. Ourselves, MPI and International Enterprise of Singapore, are also encouraging more joint ventures. We're working together to get more investments into real estate. As an outcome of the, uh, the, the good relationship between the two prime ministers, uh, they've announced the high-speed rail, uh, and your prime minister has said this is going to be a game changer, uh, not just for, for one country, but for the, three, the two countries and the three cities. Obviously, Singapore, KL, and Johor would be linked very closely, and this would serve to hasten employment in, this country, in these places, um, increase the income and the population. Why is this the right time? Now, Malaysia is a very natural first choice because of its proximity and familiarity to Singaporeans. Malaysia is also the biggest beneficiary of Singapore's rising outward FDI. If you look at your statistics, you find that a lot of um, Singaporeans are actually taking money out of the country. And in fact, your government is also encouraging uh, Singaporeans to invest outside, co-joined with other countries, not just Malaysia, but Vietnam, Thailand, and so forth. Now, there was actually a survey done by ENY, and they found that 54% of the 600 businessmen they surveyed they want to invest in Malaysia. So there's this push factor as well as the pull factor, and both are, seem to be going in one direction, is going to Malaysia. Now, while Australia, US, and Europe are of investment interest, the cost of maintenance and transport costs can be very high uh, compared to doing uh, investments in Malaysia. And Malaysia also offers multi-investment opportunities as a business destination. Malaysia will also be transforming to a high-income nation. So you can imagine if when the incomes of the people rise and double, uh, definitely you will not be able to find the kind of properties and values that you are looking at right now. On top of that, land is becoming more and more scarce, especially around the KL city. Um, the bilateral relations, as I said, uh, as I've said uh, has improved significantly, and you will see um, a more trade and more investments between the two countries. So this is actually the right time because it's just the beginning of these better relations. Now, why invest in Malaysia as a home buyer? I can think of at least 10 good reasons political stability, the proximity and familiarity, there are no hurricanes, earthquakes and nuclear activity in Malaysia. We have a low cost, a, a low density environment and the housing is relatively affordable, definitely to Singaporeans. As a second home, Malaysia's real estate values are about four to six times lower than Singapore. And foreign immigrants enjoy a lower cost of living, a more relaxed pace of life. It's also voted by Forbes as the 10th most friendliest stations in the world. We have low medical costs, uh, quality and internationally recognized education at affordable prices. Mod modern architectures, uh, I think our developers have won international uh, FIAPC World uh, Awards. Gated and guarded concepts and lifestyle of the rich, such as golf memberships, is within the reach of the average Singaporean. This is some evidence of uh, KL's uh, consumer price index to show the lower cost of index compared to Singapore. And as you can see, Malaysia is ranked 11th most preferred education destination by UNESCO. 
we have um, all these universities, Southampton, Newcastle, uh, Marlborough, Reading, all in Iskandar already. We are also ranked third most preferred healthcare destination in Asia. So there's a strong demand from growing medical tourists coming over. Uh, our healthcare is very affordable. Yeah? To do a bypass, um, it's, it's definitely much, much cheaper than if you did it elsewhere. So if you need more information, um, do write to us, uh, or you just type Malaysia Property Inc. You should be able to find us on the website. Thank you.